Hello everybody, namaskar to all the beautiful people out there. Hope you guys are doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. And guys, in today's lesson, we are going to master present participle phrases. We'll understand what exactly a present participle phrase is, how it works, how to use it in a sentence, where do we use it, what does it do. We'll learn everything about it. This is going to be informative. This is going to be fun. Make sure you watch it until the end. I'm excited. I know you guys are too. Let's do it. All right, everybody, let's start with understanding what exactly a present participle phrase is and what it does in a sentence. What is a present participle phrase? A present participle phrase starts with a present participle. That is an ing form of a verb. So it's a phrase that starts with a present participle and gives information about a noun, modifies a noun. It generally does that. It can modify a complete sentence or modify the main verb in the main clause. It can do that as well. We'll talk about it going forward. But it usually, generally, uh, modifies a noun, gives information about it. Now, Note it, the information it gives about the noun it modifies can be essential, can be important to the meaning of the sentence uh, or non-essential, that is not important, that is extra to the meaning of the sentence, right? So it starts with the present participle and is followed by the object of the present participle or the, uh, or any modifier or both, all right? Let's take some examples and understand this. The girl sitting beside the tree is the topper of our class. The girl sitting beside the tree is the topper of our class. So sitting beside the tree is our present participle phrase, right? The girl is the topper of our class. If we say this, the girl is the topper of our class, we don't know which girl the speaker is referring to, which girl the speaker is talking about. So we need something to give information about the noun the speaker is referring to. So we've used a present participle phrase that is sitting beside the tree. The girl, which girl? Sitting beside the tree. There are so many girls. Let's suppose we're in a park and there are so many girls. And the speaker is referring to the girl that is sitting beside the tree. There's only one tree in the park. Let's assume that. Highly unlikely, but let's assume that there's only one tree in the park. And the speaker is referring to the girl sitting beside the tree. The girl, which girl? Sitting beside the tree is the topper of our class. So sitting is the present participle. Beside the tree is a modifying phrase, is an adverb phrase talking about the place of the action. Sitting where? Beside the tree. Okay. So it's giving essential uh, important information in order uh, to find out the noun the speaker is referring to. Right. It's helping us identify the noun the speaker is referring to. The girl. Which girl? Sitting beside the tree. Another example. Wearing a black coat. Ron enters the hall and waves at the students. Wearing a black coat, Ron enters the hall and waves at the student. So, wearing a black coat, as you can see, as highla highlighted, is the present a participle phrase, starting with the present participle wearing, followed by the object of the verb wearing. Wearing what? A black coat, right? So, uh, this is identifying the noun, uh, the subject, drawn, wearing a black coat. Who's doing that? Drawn is doing it, right? But it's not giving essential or important information about the noun, Ron. As Ron is already specific, already identified. So, it is just giving extra information, which is obviously making the sentence more informative, more colorful. But it's not helping us to identify the noun, as the noun is already identified or specific, all right? Wearing a black coat, Ron enters the hall and waves at the student. So Ron enters the hall and waves at the student and he's also wearing a black coat, right? So we're just talking about other, other things about the guy, right? Ron enters the hall and waves at the student and meanwhile is wearing a black coat, all right? So it can give essential information or non-essential information. Now. How do we use a present participle phrase? We use it in three different ways. Number one, to identify a noun and describe it. And the description can be essential, can be important or non-essential, non-important, as we just have seen. And this is how we use it all the time, majorly, right? But we can also use it to give the reason of the main clause. We can use it to modify the main clause, right? To give the reason of the main clause. 
and we can also use it to show the result of an action to show the result of the main clause we can also use it this way right so we'll understand all the usages one by one let's start with the very first one to identify the subject right here a present participle phrase modifies identifies a noun and gives information about it right and the information as we have just talked about can be essential or non essential extra okay let's take some examples and understand this nobody likes to talk uh, with the man sitting on the rock alone nobody likes to talk with the man if i simply say this nobody likes to talk with the man now you'll start scratching your head thinking which man the speaker is talking about nobody likes to talk with the man which man which man the man sitting on the rock alone right there's a man sitting on the rock right alone so that is the man the speaker is referring to nobody likes to talk with the man sitting on the rock alone now important piece of information a present participle phrase is a reduced adjective clause this is basically an adjective clause we have reduced it to a present participle phrase so instead of saying nobody likes to talk with the man who is sitting on the rock alone we are saying nobody likes to talk with the man sitting on the rock alone so we reduce an adjective clause to a present participle phrase by removing the conjunction and the helping verb right this is what it is all right another example can you see the tiny girl playing with the sand she looks adorable during that can you see the girl can you see the tiny girl there are so many tiny girls which one are you talking about can you see the tiny girl playing with the sand can you see the tiny girl playing with the sand she looks adorable doing that right so playing with the sand uh, is the uh, present participle phrase modifying the noun girl which girl uh, is the speaker talking about the girl playing with the sand all right so these two uh, phrases are essential are important to the meaning of the sentence now let's look at some examples of present participle phrases giving extra information about the noun it modifies all right example number 1 listening to his favorite songs max checked all the papers and signed the posters right the main clause is max checked all the papers and signed the posters right now listening to his favorite songs is the present participle phrase starting with the present participle listening listening to his favorite songs max did something max checked all the papers and signed the posters and while he did that he was listening to his favorite songs so listening to his favorite songs is giving information about the noun max but the information is extra obviously it's giving us more information about the entire situation it's it's better right it's colorful but it's not helping us identify the noun or the speaker is referring to because it's already identified max is a proper name right another example we hid behind a wall watching the boys rob a shop we hid we hid behind a wall watching the boys rob a shop so watching the boys rob a shop is the present participle of uh, phrase here starting with the present participle watching right and it's identifying the subject we here it can modify a pronoun as well generally it it refers to a noun but it can refer to a pronoun as well so here watching the boys rob a shop is referring to the subject which is we we watching the boys rob a shop hid behind a wall so we hid behind a wall and while we were hiding behind the wall we were watching the boys rob a shop right so it's giving extra information about uh the subject we but the information is 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 handy is nice is colorful right it's making the sentence more colorful all right this is the very first usage of a present participle phrase number 2 to uh, give the reason of the main uh, clause right to show the reason of the main clause here a present participle phrase introduces the reason uh, of the action in the main clause it tells us the reason of the main clause why the main clause uh, occurred or happened okay let me show you an example looking at the picture of his mother max started smiling so looking at the picture of his mother is the present participle phrase starting with the present participle looking identifying the subject max now let's understand what exactly this phrase is doing so the main clause is max started smiling max did something max started what smiling now understand what made him do that why did he start smiling 
looking at the picture of his mother so he was looking at the picture of his mother which made him emotional or which did something to him and that's why he started smiling so this uh, present participle phrase is working as the reason why he did something else why he did the next action which is started smiling he was not already smiling looking at the picture made him smile all right so this is working as the reason why the main clause occurred or happened okay another example listening to what her colleague said about her she left the room and started crying now listening to what her colleague said about her is the present participle phrase starting with the present participle listening all right identifying the uh, subject she okay so the main clause is she left the room and started crying now ask the same question why did she leave the room and start crying because of listening to what her colleague said about her this made uh, her do something this made her leave the room and start crying okay so again the present participle phrase is working as the reason why uh, the main clause happened and notice both these actions are happening one after another so uh, the present participle the action in the present participle phrase happened first right or maybe they happened right after uh, each other right or they happened at the same time right listening to what her colleague said about her she was listening and she just left while listening this is also possible all right next use is to show the result of an action right to show the result of the main clause so we sometimes use uh, the present participle phrase to introduce the result of the main clause what is the result of the main clause so the main clause resulted in this and that will be that part will be in present participle phrase okay so when we introduce the result of a main clause uh, we often use the present participle phrase uh, at the end of the sentence okay let me show you an example and make you understand he started talking about the death of his child leaving everyone in tears so the main clause is he started talking about the death of his child and the present participle phrase is leaving everyone in tears starting with the present participle leaving okay uh, so he started talking about the death of his child right and the result of this action is that everybody started uh, everybody was in tears all right so this entire situation this entire clause resulted in making everybody teared up right uh, making everybody emotional so he started talking about the death of his child this resulted in leaving everyone in tears right uh, the plane crashed into the building destroying it and killing more than 200 people so the main clause is the plane crashed into the building right this is the main clause resulting in the plane destroying it destroying the building and killing more than 200 people now notice in both these examples the present participle phrase is referring to the subject of the sentence right in the first example leaving everyone in tears it's it's referring to the uh, subject he he leaving everyone in tears in the second example destroying it killing uh, more than 200 people what is doing that it's the plane that did it all right so uh, and that is exactly why we're using a comma here because the noun the subject it is referring to it is modifying is quite far away from it and that is why we're using a comma so that it doesn't appear to modify something else in the sentence right so this way uh, we can also use a present uh, participle phrase and when we do that we use a comma before it right because it modifies the subject all right so this is how uh, we use a present participle phrase in a sentence now position of a present participle phrase where do we use it in a sentence it can be used in three different places number one beginning of a sentence number two in the middle of a sentence that is usually uh, right after the subject and number three at the end of a sentence let me show you all three cases number one beginning of a sentence holding a cup of tea john enters the building john enters the building and while he's doing that he has a cup of tea in his hands so holding a cup of tea giving information about the noun john holding a cup of tea when you use it in the beginning of a sentence you have to use a comma holding a cup of tea comma john enters the building all right two actions happening at the same time laying on the bed charu wrote the entire post laying on the bed present participle phrase comma charu wrote the entire post second middle of a sentence here we use the present participle phrase right after the subject right after the noun it modifies 
Alex, looking into his phone, told us to leave the room. Alex, looking into his phone, told us to leave the room. All right. So it's modifying the subject Alex and it's coming right after it. You can use it in the beginning of the sentence as well. Looking into his phone, Alex told us to leave the room. All right. Second example, uh, he sitting on a gaming chair took the class. He sitting on a gaming chair took the class. The subject is he already identified. That's why we're using commas to offset it. Okay. Uh, the last is end of a sentence. Here we uh, use the present participle phrase at the end of a sentence after the object of a verb or the object of a preposition. Let me show you some examples and make you understand. They caught the guy wearing the red jacket the other day. They caught the guy. They caught the guy wearing the red jacket. The other day is an adverb of uh, time, right? You can remove it if you want to. They caught the guy. Which guy? Wearing the red jacket. Which guy? Wearing the red jacket. Coming at the end of a sentence. You can have something after it. So it's not literally the end. It's after the object or object of a preposition. After the subject, verb and object. All right. Another example. She left the room fuming and crying. She left the room. And uh, in what state she was? Fuming and crying. All right. Coming at the end of the sentence. Okay. Referring to the subject she. That's why we have this comma, right? Because it's uh, not giving essential information. Now, important thing. Do not confuse a present participle phrase with a gerund phrase. <laughs> they both look just the same. They both look just the same, but their functions are very different, all right? A gerund phrase um, works like a noun, right? Functions like a noun, right? Uh, and a present participle phrase, as we just have seen, modifies the noun or modifies the main verb of uh, the main clause all right works as the reason of the main clause right so it works as a modifier uh, whereas a gerund phrase works as a noun so do not confuse them let me show you some examples and make you understand listening to his favorite songs he finished editing the video so here listening to his favorite songs is working as a present participle phrase starting with the uh, present participle listening and modifying a uh, the subject he giving extra information okay now i can use it as uh, a noun for example listening to his favorite songs makes him happy what makes him happy listening to his favorite songs makes him happy so here listening to his favorite songs is working as the subject of this sentence now ask what makes him happy listening to his favorite songs makes him happy you can use it as the object of a verb I love listening to my favorite songs or he loves uh, listening to his favorite songs or uh, uh, his favorite time pass is uh, listening to his favorite songs, right? We can do that. So this is something you have to understand. Keep in mind. All right. Do not confuse a present participle phrase with a gerund phrase. Now, present participle phrase and commas. Should we use a comma with a present participle phrase or not? I'm pretty sure you've already understood it, but still. I have to tell you a couple of important things. So, if a present participle uh, phrase gives essential information or any participle phrase, not just present participle, even a past participle, right? If a participle phrase gives essential, important information about the noun, it modifies about the noun, it, it, it identifies, do not use a comma, right? Do not use a comma. If it gives essential, important information about it, all right? Examples. The girl dancing on the stage is my sister. The girl is my sister. Which girl? I don't know. The girl dancing on the stage is my sister. If you use commas here to offset this phrase, that will be a mistake. The girl, comma, dancing on the stage, comma, is my sister. Incorrect. We need this piece of information to identify uh, the subject the, sub, uh, the, the uh, speaker is referring to. The girl, which girl? Dancing on the stage. That's the girl the speaker is referring to, right? The girl dancing on the stage is my sister. Another example. I was talking about the man sitting at the back bench with uh, Rhea. I was talking about the man. Which man are you talking about, man? Which man? I was talking about the man, the man sitting at the back bench with Rhea. The man who is sitting at the back bench with Rhea, right? Adjective clause reduced to present participle phrase, right? So if it's giving essential information, do not use commas with it, okay? But if it's giving non-essential information, use a comma, use a comma. Holding a cup of tea, John enters the building. John is already uh, identified specific. Hence, we have to use a comma after this, right? If it's coming in the beginning, you have to use a comma, right? You have to. 
Another example, Joe Rogan, proper name, comma, living the life of a mar martial artist. Joe Rogan, comma, living the life of a martial artist is the owner of JRE, the most popular podcast on the internet, right? So living the life of a mar martial artist is the present participle phrase, starting with the present participle living, uh, modifying, uh, identifying the subject Joe Rogan, right, which is uh, already identified, already specific. That's why we're using commas to offset it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, now you know when and when not to use commas uh, with present participle phrases. Okay. Another important point. Do not misplace your present participle phrase. <laughs> if you misplace it, if you put it little far away from the noun or pronoun it modifies, it'll end up modifying something else, modifying a wrong noun right, which you do not want it to do, right? So always uh, put it close to the noun, it modifies, okay? For example, Max bought a new car looking forward to impress people. So looking forward to impress people is the present participle phrase, starting with the present participle looking. Now, focus. What is this phrase modifying? Is it the car that is looking forward to impress people or Max who is looking forward to impress people? Obviously, it is Max who is looking forward to impress people and that is why he bought the car, right? But it seems to modify the noun car. Max bought a new car, the car looking forward to impress people, right? So it gives a wrong meaning, right? Though we understand it, but that's not something we want to do. We do not want to confuse a reader or listener, right? So place it next to the noun it modifies. Max, comma, looking forward to impress people, comma, bought a new car or Looking forward to impress people, comma, Max bought a new car. Okay, another example. Trying to get some money, the house had to be sold. Trying to get some money, the house had to be sold. It seems to modify the noun, the house, right? Can a house try something? Is it the house trying uh, to get some money? No, right? Obviously not. A person tries something, but we do not have a person in the sentence. So the sentence does not have the noun or the pronoun this present participle phrase intends to modify hence it's a dangling modifier it is just dangling in the sentence hanging without having the noun or pronoun it intends to modify all right so be careful with this situation as well so that is all about today's lesson guys hope you enjoyed it hope you liked it hope uh, now you're feeling more comfortable more confident about this topic if you did hit the like button that's my motivation if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and if, if you already have, share the video with others so that it can help others as well. And if you have any questions, any doubts, feel free to ask your questions in, in the comment section below. Join my Facebook group, Instagram page. Uh, a lot of things are happening there. Join these pages. The links are in the description. I have a detailed post on this topic on my website as well, www.com. Now www.englishwithashish.com the link is in the description so you can check it out and i'll see you guys very soon till then keep learning have fun i'm out now